Hey guys, on the block NFL edition, the mm -hmm. Game League edition, uh, first mm -hmm. one of the year. I know that we did it. Uh, we did it last year. Here with the million dollar Matty Gore Henry. Guys. <laughs> Let's see if you can make the viewers some money. So we're gonna go through every game. Um, I'm gonna get you to go first. We'll go in order. So first game we got Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Pittsburgh a uh, little bit like me last week. Taking my team. Yeah, Goskowski. The Titans right really at the end. Yeah, yeah. but um, playing Porco. Tight for a little <laughs> So it's three and a half for Baltimore in Baltimore. You like that? You know what? I mean, I think you know when you're getting three and a half points and on an undefeated team, I think you you got to be in a situation where you got to take the underdog there. I think Baltimore. I think Lamar Jackson has had some solid games. He's definitely struggled. Uh, I think that Pittsburgh defense, and, I, and I'm saying this in the fact that I do have Lamar Jackson in a lot of fantasy teams, and I hope he does well. But in in reality, in terms of the betting situation. He that Pittsburgh defense is no joke. Um, they're really they're really quite good. Baltimore's defense too. Baltimore defense yeah. is quite Might good. Might be the best. Yeah. It, it'll to me it'll be a field goal game either way. So it, considering it's you're getting that extra half point, I'm gonna take the Steelers there to um, to, to beat the to get to over the three and a half there because of the fact that as an undefeated team and you're getting the points, you know, I think you gotta go with the with the Steelers there getting the extra half point. If it were two and a half, I might think twice, but the extra point there, point five, I think does it for me. You got your checkbook ready? They uh, they uh, you got your checkbook the ready. They got the checkbook ready. <laughs> Get it ready, guys, because my pick of the week this week wow. is Baltimore oh, minus wow. three and a half against Ballsy. Pittsburgh. Okay, so whatever you have, back up the truck and Ballsy. take Lamar Jackson and Baltimore. Now, what's the reasoning? I gotta hear this reasoning. Well, Pittsburgh's undefeated, and mm -hmm. this is the thing. You look at it's a division game. Three points is kind of what the home team gets, anyways. I just think that Baltimore wants to make a statement here. They haven't been great against the spread this year, or even in general. Like they've done well, but this is this is the game they need to win if they want to win the division at home. You're gonna to have to go mm -hmm. to Pittsburgh anyways. I just think that Baltimore's defense here is gonna just slam the door on Pittsburgh. They're really gonna get some pressure at Roethlisberger, and I, I want to see how Pittsburgh's gonna adjust because last year, last week against the Titans, they just threw up so many points. Don't really took their foot off the pedal. I think that. It might be a letdown game for them. They're undefeated. They're going to lose eventually. This is the perfect team to lose to. And I think that it might get to seven points. Not the spread, okay. but I think that Baltimore might move by a touchdown at this one. Mm, fair enough. Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting game. I mean, I can go either way. Again, those, those division games tend to be pretty tight. So for the most I'll part, take, yeah. I'll take the points in terms of just, you know. Hold, I think the Baltimore are going to likely win the, wins the game, but I can see maybe a, a, a late Justin Tucker field goal from like a 50 yard to win the game. Unlike Oskowski, he probably hits. Yeah. Well, we shall see. Gosko, you know, let's just talk about it quick. So Goskowski in week one <laughs> could not make an extra point. He, could. he missed every time. Yeah. I was blown away when I saw that he was the special teams player of the month. Yeah. I don't watch every second of every Titans game. The second game, he was, he was incredible. That's what won him. That won him that. I think <laughs> he just can't believe it. He's like, they, they should cut him. They should cut extra him. Extra points. And all of a sudden, he come back. And then, so all I saw was week one, where he almost cost him the game against Denver. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm watching you know last week's game, and as they're lining up to take the kick, I'm like, there's no chance in hell he's gonna fucking miss. because all I've seen is him miss field goals, right? Yeah. I haven't watched the other game, and to, to the you know I wasn't surprised at all. He ends up missing it, and you see the look on Roethlisberger's face, the amazing <laughs> shot, and he's like, did he miss that? That's exactly what I was saying. But move on from that. Uh, Goskowski cost uh, the team almost two games, but he did cost them the one last week. So the interesting game. Rams coming off that Sunday night, or sorry, Monday uh, win against uh, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to Miami, who had a big uh, win last week, or whenever their last game was, because Fitzpatrick is yeah, no, they're on, they're on by off, right. Yeah. So they've had two has had a yeah. two has had almost two weeks to prepare for this game. They got Aaron Donald and, and that Rams defense coming out in week one. Well, that's about Rams with four or five points, depending on where you're going to go. We have it here as five. What do you think about that one? I well, first and foremost, I thought I think the Miami decision, considering that they. They legitimately have been playing well. The, the, the turn to uh, Tua doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, I think, you know, Fitzpatrick has this thing where, yes, he, he, he starts off well and then he fades like crazy. But then you wait for that. Right now, they're in a situation where the players are, are, are seemingly motivated. A huge win against the 49ers, albeit a pretty beat-up 49ers team. They've been beat-up all year, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't have most. They didn't have Jimmy. Uh, actually, they did have Jimmy. Actually, I think they have most of it. The defense, I know, it was pretty beat up. But anyways, it's a, it's a bad spot, I think, for Tua because you have a, a Rams team that's that's pretty good uh, defensively. You got Donald. A lot of guys that will pressure. 
first start for a rookie. It's not, it's not a good spot. And Jalen Ramsey on Jalen uh, Ramsey. Right, like Do you see that? There's going to be some growing pains with Tua. I would have waited a, like, had, really had, had, had Fitzpatrick been the, quarter, the, been the quarterback here. I probably would have, you know, and then the, and the, spread's about the, same, the, the spread the spread would be the same, but I probably would have taken Miami a little bit. I think two is going to be good, but I mean, throwing him in there like that, where when the team should be on a high from from that 49ers game, is probably a bad idea against a team that's realistically can put up some points. He's got a good offense, a solid defense. I think that that, that the Rams will cover him by a touchdown. And the fact that it just isn't a smart idea just throwing in a rookie quarterback like that. This is one of those things where, for, okay, so Miami's coming off a bye and they're still five point dogs at home. That's saying something, I think, yeah. right? Like usually when you're coming off a bye, it's a lot closer and you're at home. Rams on a short week, they played on Monday night. So I've seen in comments of some you know, articles that I've read, don't look into this too much. They want you to think Miami smashed the Rams because mm-hmm. it should be higher, it should be six or seven. Probably. I think, and, and I thought about that too, but based on the fact of short week A, one less week day, and then Miami coming off the bye, I just think that Miami's defense is too good for this to get out of hand, unless mm-hmm. to a really lays an egg or something like that. For that reason, I don't love the pick, but I'm gonna go Miami plus five points in this one. Okay. Take it, take the next game. So you got here, you got the Jets, or the atrocious Jets, traveling to Kansas City, and Kansas City is getting 20 uh, and a half, which is Huge, like you don't even see those lines. That's a 99, 2000 Rams. That's a 99, 2000 Rams. And that just goes to show you just how bad the Jets are. Though they did play reasonably well against the Bills, but those division games tend to be different. 20 and a half is a lot of points. Now, should should Casey beat them severely into the ground? Absolutely. I'm a little bit uh, thrown off because I think, I think Casey hasn't been the juggernaut that they were Last year, in a lot of all of the games, they won. You know, they beat the Bills pretty pretty good on that on, on that they Tuesday night game. Too, yeah. um, the defense hasn't been the greatest uh, in a lot of sense. The Jets are so bad though that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay I'm gonna lay the twenty and a half because I think Mahomes might have a field day. And again, you know, Kelsey, you got Le'Veon Bell now. You got you know Ty- Tyreek Hill. They've just got so many weapons. That I think probably Mahomes does look like they probably beat him by like 35 points for it. it really? It, it, it can be pretty bad. I mean, it if you has the capability. If you look at it, like I, I could see one of those situations where Casey just doesn't doesn't punt the whole the whole damn yeah, game. Yeah. So if you look at that and they, they throw up a 35 42 piece, is is, is there are the Jets going to score three Jets touchdowns? Score, but Kansas City's defense is bad, but is it that bad? I mean, that's the thing. Can the Jets score think, 14 points? You think? With with you know probably with, not with the yeah. crowd is still out that they don't have many weapons I would I wouldn't think so so in case they would need a defensive touchdown I'm, right? I'm taking KC with the three touchdowns because I think Mahomes just has a field day and they, and they win. it could be one of those forty four to three games it, it'll probably be pretty grim I'm so torn on this game because it's, it's, it's either going to be like an 18, 19 point game or it might get to thirty five forty oh, one right like I don't think that. I don't like this. I don't like. I don't even know who I'm gonna. Well, pick, I mean, laying like, like that kind of those type of points is usually never a smart idea. Yeah. But again, they put the if that had been at an 18 and a half, or it would it would be easy, or even something below 20. And a half, yeah. Like you probably like oh you'd be put your house on KC to but, at least do that. But 20 and a half, like it's literally three touchdowns. This is the thing. What's your logic if you're the Jets? If you're betting on the Jets? I mean, it's one of the little things where you know it could be one of those backdoor covers where like they take Mahomes out and they're up by three touchdowns and then the Jets score, you know, whatever one that does, like yeah. it's not gonna make any difference in the game and they, they beat him by 14. Um, seeing as like I said, I don't, I would not put much into that. I'm gonna go KC in 20 and a half. Yeah, I think that, I would that, agree like, with that. If you're using your brain, you kind of have to do that. Not, but let's move on from that one. Indy coming off a bye minus three at Detroit. Who just coming off that Atlanta win last DJ, second with Stanford? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, Detroit's a better road team. They're not. They're not a good team at all. But they're a better road team than at home. Indy, like I said, coming off a bye, very good defense. Titans keep winning. They need to keep pacing that division. I mean, it, I mean, in all honesty, had it not, not been for a Todd Gurley situational era of him blowing in for that touchdown, the, the, the they would have lost to the Falcons. And I think Indy's a much better, better team. Though the Falcons again had a really good Thursday nighter yesterday. Uh, I'm going to take Indy in the three points because I think they're just overall the better team. Um, I think they, you know, they they need that. They need this win. They've been a little bit nonchalant lately. I do like the run game with with Taylor. The defense has been pretty good. I think it's just one of those games where Detroit coming off two wins in a row. 
even at home, I, I'm not really buying that. Yeah. I'll take the field goal because it's, it's not the spread isn't that big. Had it been a little bit more than a field goal, I would, might think twice, but three points seems about right. I'll take, I'll take Indiana. I'm going to go with you there. I just think in, uh, Indianapolis is just a much better team. Both sides of the ball coming off the bye. I don't see really much of a reason to take Detroit. Who bets on Detroit? You know what I mean? Like, it, give me Indy. A lot of okay. broken people, that's yeah, for sure. I'm a sad Detroit fan. Big is going to Cleveland, who just lost Odell Beckham for the season. Um, lines at two right now for Cleveland at home. Vegas has the the Raiders have beaten Kansas City. Yeah, they've also lost to some uh, you know not great teams. Who, yeah, they got they got beat up uh, pretty bad by the by the Bucks and Brady last year. Yeah, I mean I think Vegas has been one of those interesting situations. They they beat the Saints when they on that first game when they got to Vegas. They they have strong capabilities. They definitely have been struggling. The Beckham loss. I mean it all depends on how you see it. They weren't utilizing them very well anyways. Forcing the ball um, to him probably. It seems it. like yeah, it seems like that that Baker preferred other other people in the offense. Um, I mean, it, so now they're down their number one wide receiver. If you can, Beckham would be considered that. They still don't have Nick Chubb. Uh, I think Kareem Hunt's been been pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, the two points for a for a home team when in a pick em game seems a, seems about accurate. Um, yeah, Cleveland's only really looked bad against teams that you would consider good to teams. be elite teams. Yeah. Um, I think Vegas is one of those. Up and down bubble teams, teams bubble teams. Um, yeah, but I'm going to say I'm gonna take the upset here, and I'm actually gonna say that the, that that Vegas wins this game, in in the fact that I think the defense will, will be pretty solid, and because of what happened last week against the Bucks, they they probably have a little bit bounce to back. prove, and they'll bounce back. Because again, the Browns barely barely beat the Bengals, and I know um, Baker looked great. It was the Bengals. Yeah. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Vegas there to to just win outright and cover and cover the two points. Are you taking Cleveland? No, I'm taking uh, Vegas. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. Cover the okay. Yeah, I, I like Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, Vegas was my pick. Hearing your hearing your little breakdown, I was maybe thinking because I think that Cleveland might be a better team. They're not going to win much anyways, but I think that, like I said, just Mayfield there not having to focus on that side of the field the whole time and looking at whoever's open might help him out. I want to take I, I, like once again, I'm going to take Vegas, but I. Not super happy with the pick, but I'll try sure. Vegas. Uh, Tennessee minus six and a half going into Cincinnati, who's one five and one. Tennessee just had their first loss last week. Uh, it seems like a no brainer to take Cincinnati, or sorry, to take uh, Tennessee no, minus the six and a half, <laughs> right? Against a team that's won one game. Yeah. But I, at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if Tennessee ends up winning by three or four points. I think that the, the Tennessee, uh, again, lost last week, and unfortunately with the, with the kicking situation. Faced a much better defense. Um, I think I know Henry didn't really eat much last week because again the Pittsburgh they stifled him up until about the end where he got, got, got a rushing touchdown. Well, they just put an extra guy in the box, right? It's, it's tough. I think I think he'll definitely eat more against uh, against Cincinnati. Um, I think the Cincinnati the, uh, the Tennessee Titans defense is is much better than people give it credit for, and I think Joe Burrow will have a lot of problems there. So I'm gonna say that Tennessee wins that game and probably by about ten points. Um, they're just better on both sides of the ball, and I and again getting a touchdown. I'll take that every day of the week. Yeah, when when the lines opened up, I I took Cincy with that six at the time. I'll take the Titans here. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I I don't think it's going to be a blowout because I think that Cincinnati with Burrow and the weapons he has, Higgins and all those guys, I think they can still put up points. And I like Tennessee's yeah, defense. Maybe no mixing again, which is which might be a problem with the running game. Yeah, um, Cincinnati's defense is bad. I just don't know. As good as te- Tennessee's a team that obviously is going to run the ball and they're not going to air it. Like AJ Brown, love him obviously. I think he's one of the better receivers in the league. But I just don't think that Tennessee airs it out enough to blow many teams out. Good job with those fantasy stats, AJ. You didn't mm-hmm. run, him, run any leagues. <laughs> Tweet, I don't know. I, I just think that I'll take I'll take well, Tennessee. He might be. He's injured uh, again. He's uh, he's been questionable the last couple weeks to play. So I, I, I might have a little bit. He had like an eighty yard touchdown last. Yeah, well, it's, well, you know how the NFL goes. Like on Thursday, these guys don't practice because they're all ail- ailment up, and then on Sunday, all of a sudden, they turn into Superman. Yeah, just so like the I, I don't know guys. how that works. Yeah. I think it's just you know to keep keep them fresh or whatever. But yeah, I think Tennessee's the pick there for sure. Okay, your um, beloved Patriots uh, against my boy Adam. Shout out to Adam. The Buffalo Bills. Did the did the Bills finally beat the Pats in this one? Bills minus four and a half. The battle. The, if if the Bills win this game, you have to think that. And I, we don't think that Miami's going to beat the Rams this week. You have to think that the Bills win this game. It's pretty much clear sailing to the AFC East regular season crown there. 
Well, it's been an unfortunate year for sure. It started off reasonably well. I mean, that win against Miami, Cam looked great. Uh, ever since he got COVID, I don't know what happened to the man. The real Cam's come to I life. watched, uh, well, here's the thing. And, you know, we had this discussion off camera and so forth. Nine guys are opting out on defense. The, the defense has been nowhere close to the capabilities that they were last year, which really held the Patriots in a lot of games last year because they were a top-notch defense. You know, you don't have Hightower. You lost Jamie Collins. Uh, you lost Van Noy uh, to the free agency to, free agency to the uh, Detroit Lions. They 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 have no capabilities on any side of the ball. This is probably the worst Patriots team I think I, I've seen in 20, 24 Since years. The yeah, easily. They I saw Cam not be able to complete a five yard pass. But barely he can't throw the football. Barely be able to throw the football. So uh, do I have any belief that they can win that that this game at Buffalo? Even though Buffalo against the better teams have has struggled and they didn't play the Jets all that well, all that well. Unless Bill Belichick comes up with with some crazy scheme to to get to Josh Allen. With what they currently have, I don't see it. I think San Francisco had a field day last week. I, I, I've literally almost had to turn off the last two Patriots games, which has, which has basically been never non existent. It's like you're about to rip out your hair. Right it was, it was really the, the Denver game. They, they almost had that miracle comeback, and then they, they fall short at the end. But I have no belief that, that they can win this game in any in any really? decent manner. No, because I, I mean, from what you what you've seen, I mean, the 49ers were underrated going into the game last week, and I feared for a little bit of that because. Their defense is still pretty good, even though they've been missing a lot of guys. Favorite. By two or three, I think they were at home, and I think a lot of it had to do with. And here's the thing: Jimmy, Jimmy G didn't even play well in that game, no. and they still got robbed. They couldn't stop the run, no which can't is score. which is again a situation where again Buffalo has some. The running game isn't the greatest, but like they they're just not getting enough offense you know, now that Julian Julian Edelman's out. Your number one receiver is Bird. You got you know, Nikhil Harry's been a complete bust. Terrible drafting, by the way, by Bill. I mean. I can go on another 10 minute rant about how Bill's been terrible at drafting. There's people actually like on in the media saying that they should fire fight for Bill uh, as the GM or not as the head just coach. Remove the title, yeah. Because he's been terrible. Like the Keel Henry over your boy your boy AJ Brown over DK. I was praying for DK Metcalf. I, I'm, I'm but seeing, he did make it to the second round, and we knew going into the draft how much of a freak he was anyway. I saw that man. Still. I'm like, this guy's doing the freak. Yeah. But they they they, have, they haven't had a decent wide receiver in forever besides Edelman. I mean, those guys, Randy Moss. Randy Moss was a one or two. So I'm thinking, like, you, you, you're giving me the Bills by, again, it looks like it's probably going to be a closer game. And I think Cam can't be any worse. But the Bills defense is no joke either. I'm taking the Bills four and a half, as, as painful and painful as that is. I'm taking New England. I, like, if I'm looking at this spread, I think that the spread should be higher. Like, New England's been terrible. I don't think they've covered in, like, three weeks. They lost to Denver at home as well, who's a terrible team. Sure, they have a good defense, but, like, they can't move the ball off. But it isn't only like the name values, what, what keeps that at four and a half? I don't think so. But who's left? There's nobody left from those teams. The defense is gone. And I guess the they, I think gone. a divisional game, it, it, tends, to, it tends to let nail the So you're telling me if this, yeah, like, if this was a neutral site game, it would be Buffalo by two points? I think, I don't know if it would be a two point. I think, the, I think if, let's say, this was if Buffalo was out of the division based off what you see from both teams. And like I said, the, the, the Bills... The one thing that you have to look at is the Bills. Yeah, the Jets game was it well, last week was pretty because they, they were they went by six or eight or less like, than ten. Less yeah. than ten. Yeah. And the Jets are worse. I would say the Jets are worse than the Patriots, yeah, Patriots for sure. which is insane thing to even think about. <laughs> and you know what? And realistically, like I, I, I came away last week thinking they, they might not win another game, but then I saw that the Jets were on run. They still got two against the Jets, yeah, so they might win. To, they might go to five. They might get five wins. Um. I don't know. If there's any circumstances after what you've seen, there's no way that this gets... You can't use logic to take the Patriots here. That's what yeah, you I can't can. No, you can't. Now, it can't be any worse. This, this camp feeling... The one thing is that camp's feeling the heat that he might, he might get replaced. Yeah. So that might cause him to play and make some better decision-making. And some of those interceptions and so forth have been, you know, not his fault totally, but he hasn't been great. Um, but Just again, don't turn the ball over. I think it's really as simple as that. Make some... And he's, he's in those situations just like Brady had last year. The wide receivers have no separation. Yeah. There's... I think, I don't, is there a team in the NFL, and, and I'll throw this out, is there a team in the NFL the that, has, that, that has worse weapons than the Patriots have? I can only think of one. Which is? the Jets. Okay. And, and they're in the same division. <laughs> and they're in the same yeah, division, and they lost Bell. Okay. That's, that's it. Point. And that's the that's only, oh, that's, that's maybe the only couple wins they might have with the schedule now. Because like, it looks, it looks grim. They have a lot of, they have a rough schedule. They have There's honestly nobody else. That's it. 
And, and, and that, those are the Chicago's other weapons that are, are not great either. But well, I mean, you still got Robinson. You still got some caliber. Yeah, you have something. But I'm just saying, like, because, man, man I pray for Cordell Patterson back at this point. Oh, wow, yeah. And he's and he's and he's a guy that's more of a kick returner. He he would even be even Jacksonville has better weapons. But you go on and on. Okay, so I'm gonna go Patriots uh, plus the four and a half. We're gonna take the bill. Oh no, you're right. Um, we just go through these ones a little bit quicker. San Fran um, off that big win going to Seattle, who's coming off their first loss. Seattle by three at home. Line is it what it should be? What do you think? Of? You know what? I, I I end up like again, no no Debo Samuel this week because he got injured. But man, those 49ers are no joke, and that Seattle defense is so bad. It is bad. So so bad. Um, I'm gonna say that that Seattle will. I really want to go with the Niners, but but considering the fact that I mean Jimmy, I don't know how, I don't know how much Jimmy's going to really take advantage of, of that Seattle defense and the running game. They have no running backs. I'm going to think Seattle win this. I think Russell was Russell will have enough because they have more on offense than the, than the 49ers do. But it'll definitely be a close game. So but I'll take Seattle with the, with the three points because it's a pick'em game. But with but the the fact that the 49ers lost, lost so much offensively, I don't know if they'll be able to keep up. So I'm going to take the Seattle to, to win that because they have so many weapons on, on offense that the 49ers will have trouble in that secondary. So I'll take Seattle on the three points. I'm going to agree with you. Nothing more to say about that. Mm-hmm. I just think that I think Seattle's a better team They've in terms of their matchups. Fully healthy? They've gone. The fully healthy, you might have a question, yeah, right? Because so Seattle's injuries. defense is terrible, but San Fran has so a, a bunch of injuries. And how long can they keep winning with all these injuries? And you're going to a team... That's one of the best teams in football, too. Right? Well, I mean, again, you got, again, your number one wide receivers got out. You got you, your, your number one and number two running backs are out. Two defensive linemen, two defensive pro bowlers. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and Sherman's still out too uh, as a as a corner. They're yeah. they're pinned. he wasn't going to stop Metcalf anyways. But you're just yeah. losing guys when you're hey, losing backups. Tyler, Tyler Lockett had a crazy game. He's been very good, very good. Yeah, very good. So uh, Seattle uh, has two games left. New Orleans, who eked out a win last week, um, going against uh, Chicago, who. Does not look great either recently, but at least Chicago, you know, has that defense at home. You're getting five points if you're Chicago. Who do you like there? Man, Chicago's offense stinks bad. <laughs> but it so, always has. So, but here, but Robinson has a concussion, probably won't play. Yeah. So they got lit. So Nick Folk pretty much doesn't have anything there. Um, Montgomery is whatever it is. There, like Jimmy Graham will be end up being your best player offensively. Um, the New Orleans, I think the Chicago defense has been great, but they're. Uh, you saw last week against the Rams. I think the Warriors will be a fairly similar similar Thomas situation. Thomas out again. We Thomas don't... Thomas is out again. Yeah, Thomas is out again. But, it seems like it might not even be injuries at this point. Well, no, and then he actually well he punched the guy, and then he ended up getting a groin a groin injury in practice. Um, you know, shout out to, to Thomas for screwing everybody as a first round pick in fantasy, but because I mean, he's played one game, well, a half a game. I don't think he's gonna play this year. No. Um, all in all, I think that the Bears just don't have enough offensively. That that the Saints will have enough on offense. And the Bears defense will, will get too tired of being out there too long. I'll think I'll think the the Saints to cover the five. Because again, there's there's nothing. I don't know where the points are going to come from the Bears. I really don't. Yeah. The only thing that you, if you're taking Chicago, you're saying Drew Brees has not been himself this sure. year. Sure. Right. He hasn't been himself, and he doesn't have Thomas, and he also doesn't have the other uh, Emmanuel Sanders, 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 Sanders with COVID. Right. And he's not coming back this week. I know he missed last I don't, week. I don't, I don't think so. No. So you're, that's another two weapons there. Um, Kamara obviously has been great. Yeah. But other than that, I. I well, I mean, he's still, still taking New Orleans. Though. Still got, he's still got Cook. He's still got some some reasonable pieces. Yeah. Uh, yeah the defense, the defense is, I'd say yeah. it's just above average. Yeah, I just, I just don't know what Nick Foles is going to do with, yeah. with what he's got, especially without Robinson. I don't, I don't know. They don't got much. Um, Sunday nighter, mm-hmm. Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dallas looks like they might not win a game this year. I wouldn't have thought so. Ten points. But um, you know, you're down to your third string quarterback at this point. Yeah. Like, all no. I think, I think they got a good Italian boy at quarterback. Canucci. <laughs> <laughs> they got a good More Italian fumbles than completions oh, last week. Yeah. You got a feel for him, but it looks like Dallas kind of quit on this team. McCarthy might not make it to the end of the season. Which, which is insane if you think about it. Which is right? crazy. And just, you know, people want to, people that don't like Rodgers can say, you know, like, who, the, you know, the chicken or the egg thing. It looks like if Rodgers wasn't the quarterback, he would, like, McCarthy's here's, not a good coach. Here, here's the problem, and I think a lot of people, I'm not trying to make this quick. It's that I think, for example, like, to take a look at the Cowboys last year. Their, their problem wasn't on offense. Their problem was on obviously on defense for the majority. So what do you do this year? You, you pick a wide receiver in the first round when there were when there were some solid defensive options available. They are on pace, and the Redskins last week I think beat them by like twenty points, which is insane. Which was insane because the Redskins are terrible. Are terrible. But that Dallas defense is maybe uh, they were on track. I don't know how it was. They were on track to be the worst defense 
since the modern era, which is an accomplishment. Points given up. Like yeah, points point. given up. It's that's an accomplishment. That pretty much they the, the the their their biggest loss was definitely the um the, I forget he has that uh, that Dutch name Van uh, oh, uh, Van Van der something or yeah, Van der Bosch is it? I think Van der Bosch because of his neck and whatever. He makes somewhat of a, of a difference, and then I think he 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 left the game too. The Phillies got no real offense to speak of because they've got so many injuries, and the fact that, that they're getting ten points it was eight, it went up to ten. Just goes eight. to show you how bad that that Dallas situation is because there's first off yeah third string quarterback. I'm just looking at the injury line, uh, the injury thing uh, right now. Uh, Sean Lee, I was wondering where Sean Lee was. It says uh, sports hernia yeah. IR. Like yeah. he he was their only guy when they were terrible. That was really really. And I mean good. they they have that they have I think they they just traded one of the one of the uh, defensive ends and they have uh, they have Lawrence. Was, it was still a, was still a pretty good. It was, it was a very good player actually, but but they, their secondary is atrocious, and that that it's really good. That even the if Philly with all, hardly any weapons with Ertz Marcus and, Lawrence is good, but that's pretty much that. That's right? Yeah, that was basically it. So that even is historically bad. That Jalen Smith, Pro Bowler too, right? Like that. It's like they have two or three guys, and the rest of the guys are like Zeke, Zeke's been Zeke's been terrible. But the okay. kid. I've never point. been a big Zeke guy. He's obviously really good in college. I don't want to say that. I never thought he was good. He's good. Their old line yeah. went from being maybe the best in football two years ago to you know guys opting out, losing guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Collins, I believe, Leo Collins, yeah. like sat out because of the COVID thing. They don't have any bodies left. And when you have nothing to throw the ball to, so getting back to Henry when you want to throw guys in the box, if you're trying to stop the run, I think that's, I don't want to say the easiest thing to do in football, but if you have nobody to beat you on the outsides with throwing the ball, mm-hmm. stack the box. It doesn't matter how good of a running back you are. Your old line's terrible. Were you getting any holes to go through? You stop Zeke. They're not scoring any points. They have us 25 to 3 last week. And I was leaning and towards was, Dallas when I looked at this earlier. Now, you know, Philly didn't cover last week against the Giants. I, I always look at how often yeah. teams have covered. Dallas hasn't covered all year. They're 2 and 5. I don't know. I don't see where they win another game. Maybe they beat Washington later in the season. Well, I, I mean, not, not from what you saw. In exactly, right? The thing is, again, they they're gonna they're. I think there's like it's such a terrible division with that. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Like to me, the NFL has to change that rule, and that's another conversation topic where someone and there's, there's a good possibility that you know besides them playing into interdivision, they might not win. Uh, these other teams might not win any games. Yeah. You might you might legitimately have a five to six win team make the playoffs and host a game, which is absolutely ridiculous. The Philly defense is reasonably pretty good. That again, this Danucci guy. I don't know much about him. Obviously, a third stringers. They're looking to make a trade at quarterback too. If um, well, again, if Dalton can't come back, Dalton can't come with a concussion. They're they've got offensive weapons. Obviously, they've got maybe some maybe some of the best offensive weapons in the whole league. But the fact is that again, Zeke's been fumble again. No offensive line. Zeke, Zeke has been running. Last the last game, the I mean, no, you got Amari Cooper. You got Ceedee Lamb. You got the other guy that they had. The um, I think his name is Wilson. Yeah, yeah, they have weapons all over. But the fact is that they, that offensive line is so bad. And that none of those guys like CD, I think CD Lamb had, had had didn't even have a catch last week. Well, thankfully, who's gonna throw him the ball? Thankfully, I benched him in fantasy. But well, who's gonna throw him the ball, right? Like when Dalton goes down, there's nobody else to really. But then you have him. that. Then you, you maybe you rely on your defense. You put your and linebackers you can, back. You can't do that because their defense is historic, historically bad. This this is this. I, I, I think yeah. I was gonna say I think what we've got to hear is that the Philly cruises, right? Yeah, well, it's, 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 spread, it's, it's insane that Philly Cruz and they have they literally they're have terrible. no. Uh, their starting run, running back is out. Miles Sanders might not, will likely not playing. Ertz is out. Uh, Deshaun Jackson nearly got decapitated last week. He's he's done probably for the rest of the year, if not the majority of it. Who did? Deshaun Jackson got thrown oh, over. Yes, I saw he looks yeah. like he like he he was like did not end up in on a stretcher. Mm-hmm. Like they have, they're on bare bones like. Uh, with running Ricardo, Ricardo Rogers at tight end and and the, this uh, full guy. Austin Scott though has been. I was gonna say he's been pretty decent. Again, well, backup guys, yeah. and they still get a ten, get a ten point cut. That's how bad the Cowboys are yeah. in a division game. We're talking about in the Bills division. Ten points in a division game is insane. I wouldn't lay that on Philly to be honest. Both with teams you. have two wins. Eagles two four and yeah. one. Yeah, I think that, I think the Cowboys win. have at some point have to have some kind. They've been so embarrassed so many. Just like the Jets, right? The, the Jets last year. At one point, I'll take the I'll take the Cowboys with ten points. I will because of the fact that it's, it's a division game, and realistically they can't play any much worse than they've been playing. And if Danucci somehow manages to game manage one where they end That's up the reasonable, game, it, right? it's, like, I mean, Daddy Dimes nearly had a ninety yarder against the uh, was, it, was it against the Eagles? Yeah, but like the Eagles have their their own issues. But I'll I'll take Dallas to cover the ten because in a, in a division game in Philly that they might have some kind of courage and they might do something. And it might be like if they get blown up, McCarthy might get fired, or even that like. 
the defensive coordinator, I don't know how he's kept a job. Like, like they they fired they were they were pretty solid last year they weren't great they still yeah, had some high or whatever yeah. but they fired that they fired that guy mm-hmm. and like they bring in Nolan who was a coach I think it was six years ago but one of the worst defensive squads in the whole NFL that year when he, when he got canned so they bring that guy in man's man's getting Tabasco sauce in his eye <laughs> like, like, what is that? like that, that that's the best defensive stop he's had all year all year as lost the coach that's that's the reality it's that's the, yeah, it was Chipotle in the eye that's the best defensive stop he's had all year that's how terrible the match but you gotta fire it. like if they get squatted again there's no way he doesn't get fired okay so it's gone it's, we thought it was 10 it's gone up to 10 and a half yeah, as I'm, we've done the show I'm so. still <laughs> I, I'm still gonna take Dallas because they gotta have some kind of fortitude because they've been embarrassed consistently in the last few weeks. Uh, one of these games they have to make close. I, and yeah. Philly has a lot of injuries, so I'll, I'll take them to cover. I God wanna, help me. I want to agree with you, but I and as you were going on that Tabasco rant, I wanted to take <laughs> Dallas, but I'm just looking, and with, like I said, Danucci and like more fumbles than completions last week, I don't know what they do if they get the ball. If you're Philly, stop the run. You know, what's, what oh, yeah, is going to be you? Comment, and based man. on that, give me the Eagles at 10, 10 and a half, whatever it is. I think that... <laughs> Yeah. We I also don't know how that, Dallas scores. That's the thing that, that, that the Eagles go in there thinking, you know, this is this is a gimme. Danucci's going to be terrible. And all of a sudden, they, they take their, their foot off the gas a little bit. That's the know. team, though, that struggled last week, too, right? Like Against the Giants, who win by one at the end of the game, who are another terrible team in that division. Yeah, but so I was going to say that the, the Giants... The Giants are a better team than Dallas. Are a better team than, than, than Dallas. As currently... Yeah, because I think they have a, the Giants defense isn't horrible. And... Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jones has fumbleitis as he has in the trip. He's, at least he's still got some weapons. Yeah. You know, they got Ingram, they got Shepard, they got Tate. They they have, yeah. They're they're in a, they're in a much better shape. But I don't know. It'll be an interesting. It'll be a. I'll definitely be watching because I, I'm one of the first guys. Like, I absolutely, yeah, absolutely like Cowboys. Like Cowboys. Cowboys fans are just especially that S- Skip Bayless. I always love you know Shannon Sharp. Stephen A. Like, Stephen A. Yeah, the last. Well, yeah, I said that yeah, stuff because yeah. he's dancing. Yeah. Stephen A. loves it because the Cowboys fans are very unrealistic. Yeah. They're literally. I mean, I don't want to say they're delusional. Like, well, here's the thing. They haven't won something since 90, 93, 94, whatever Trade, it was, Detroit. Right. They they literally turned into, like, I hate to say it considering I'm a Leaf fan, but they're, they're pretty much the NFL they're version of the Leafs. The they're the living, we're living in the history books. This this will be our year. Yeah, and, yeah it's true. We're, 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 the, we're, the, we're the hockey yeah. universe thing. Like, yeah, Dallas yeah. thinks they're the it's biggest Texas, thing. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not Friday Night Lights, though, right? That's okay. the problem. So you got Dallas. I'm going to take Philly in this one. That's one of the few games we disagree on. And now let's move to the Monday Nighter. Tampa Bay is 10.5 right now against the, at the Giants. So 10.5 for Tampa, who's been on a tear. So I, I saw yesterday that the Giants have been hit with COVID. Like, no, tomorrow. Yeah, that's why it's not available on some. On that's some that's so basically, so the Giants, the whole, I think the whole, almost the whole offensive line really? <laughs> has gotten in, dismantled. And they're in, they're in a situation where they, they don't even know where, where some guys will be able to play. Considering the fact that, that the Tampa defense has been as ferocious as, as they've been, um, you got a fumble heavy quarterback, uh, and you can see how much that the again no, no Antonio Brown for the the Bucks this week, but the way that, that Brady and, and no Godwin and, and that has and that has, has hurt like Brady yeah. Brady without Godwin hasn't been as efficient, but with all those injuries and all those COVID situations the Giants have. They're, they're in a huge mess and so the Giants defense is pretty decent too. It is, but the Bucks defense is better. And, for considering, sure. and considering yeah. the fact that, that that Dimes has his fumble issues, and uh, I mean, what was it, ten and a half? You said ten and a half. I don't think all those COVID situations and that old line, which was which already wasn't great. And the game might get canceled. I'm just reading some stuff. Right is now. It? it might get canceled, yeah, depending on how many guys have it. And now with Monday night, you're still yeah. How many bucks guys? That, oh, I don't think of fantasy purposes. Just Mike Evans. And he he hasn't even been that great either. Um, Too many weapons there. That's the thing. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, Brady hasn't really looked for him all, all that much. Um, all in all, like you gotta go with the bucks in there, like. The Giants again lose, lose that game. I think they were up what 10, lose that, 10 points, 12 points, what, like four minutes ago, and they lost the game. They were up by two scores for sure. Unbelievable. Uh, how you lose that game? So I'm, I'm going Brady and the Bucks. They're, they're rolling. If this game goes on, I'm going to take the Giants oh, really? just because okay. I like I, just the Lions makers know the line, right? Like I think if you put it at something like you want the COVID years, stuff, like well, that, that's what I'm saying. If the game gets played, if they have enough guys, like you know, starters or guys that can come uh, in and, and do anything. Good. I think that I, I gotta take the Giants on the ten and a half. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, I guess. But like I said, it seems like the game might get postponed to an, a, to another to week. another to like yeah, a two to or another another week. a whole other week. Oh damn, that would be. Interesting. Well, if you have COVID, if you guys have COVID, you need more than a day or two to get them back, right? Well, I mean, I think that like a lot of those they guys flex the buys or whatever. Well, there was more like well, the situation where like it was the KC game with the because uh, Camp, Camp can play uh, uh, the Patriots game. Some of those guys, if everyone else tells tests negative, well, they, they still play. Yes. 
Yeah. So at the end of the day, I don't know. Uh, it's actually, I didn't even know that that was a cancellation. I had to watch all that because of the, uh, well, gambling and fantasy purposes. Uh, I did go ahead and get the Tampa defense thinking they were going to do Oh, you know what we got to do really quick, now that I just thought about this? And we got to try and keep it, let's just say, maybe like five minutes. Mm. Let's place some bets on election night. Oh my God! You really want me five minutes? Do you think I can do this no, in five just, minutes? No, but you you want to whatever. I'm gonna pull up. You know, you know, I know who you're going for. <laughs> I know who you're going for, but I just want to see like you know. So here's, 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 for this. here's the thing, and, and we don't want to tarp all there. I want just who you and, want to bet money. And on. this yeah. and this is and I've been this is been, I'm not a politics guy. You know me. You know me for a while. I'm not a politics guy. I have been paying attention to this for the last four months the on odds? a daily basis. The odds, the how things are going. There is so one of the best sites for all this stuff that I really compiles a lot of data and polls is a site called 5830, which is a lot of politics based stuff. Okay. Right now, they, they simulated the election 40,000 times. They, they do this on a daily basis. Uh, when they simulate it, 89% of the time, Biden is the winner and uh, Trump gets to, uh, gets 10. And then there's, there's one scenario where happens once in a while where there's a tie. Right now, yeah, there's a tie. They can, they I'm trying can, to pull it up right yeah. now as we go through just to give So the, the odds right now are, are I, I know off, offhand that Biden was minus 190 and Trump has been at around uh, plus 145 or plus 155. Because I've been, I've been taking a look at that because the, the gambling lines actually usually dictate there's been a lot of money coming in on Trump. Uh, well, yeah, you which know, is not surprising to me because probably most well, Republicans are this, the well, this is the thing though. <laughs> but, they're, but they're not aliens because Democrats are. But anyway, Democrats. it's like the, the thing is, right, you have to look at it, and, and I'm asking too. Okay, so Democrats minus 200, Republicans plus 165, yeah. right? And, you know, I remember ten. looking at this, I want to say right around when like COVID started, let's say like March, April, when we were in mm-hmm. lockdown. And even towards the end of the lockdown, we got out around, when would that have been July, August? Yes. It was Trump was still about a minus one twenty. Yes, he was still favorite. And at one point, when it got to the even money, out maybe like August. Now to see this kind of swing, Democrats, you know, like you're laying a hundred, you're only going to get back fifty dollars, mm-hmm. or you'll win one fifty, you'll win your hundred back plus mm-hmm. the fifty. And if you're betting a hundred on Trump to win, based on this, you're winning one hundred and sixty five dollars, two sixty five because you get your money back. Yeah. Um, the thing about this, and like I said, I want to talk politics, but what we're seeing, I think that. COVID, if, if this was not COVID, I think it might be a record high for vote turnout. Yeah. Right? Because you're getting a lot of people in because we I've talked about this with a lot of people. People that were not into politics like yourself yeah. or me, uh-huh. it's in your face 24-7. Right? Like all you're hearing about is and whether it be even before COVID, right? Racism, COVID, mm-hmm. economy. Yeah. Some of this stuff had already existed, not the COVID, but it's in your face all the time. And now you're like, okay, how can I make a change? And even we've seen, you know, friends of ours or whatever, a lot of people just don't end up voting. Here we don't really have too much early voting. You, you, I think you get one weekend maybe the time before. Yeah, and, and it's just, it, it's been one of those elections that have been so um, divisive polarizing. in terms of polarizing yeah. in terms of, I mean, I've seen people say, you know, that they're cutting people off because they're, they're the well, Who you're voting for, which is crazy. Which, it, that's crazy. crazy. And, and the yeah. situation with that is it's just it, on extremes. Like, I, I get onto social media, I get into these battles with people depending on the situation. It, to me, it's not, I think, the the best conversation that I've had with somebody in terms of this whole thing uh, that, that someone has, like, what they really don't have, like, the screeners on. And what I respect the opinion was that legitimately people want want Trump to win, not because of who he is as a person, which I think is, I think he's a despicable human being, to be honest with you, because a lot of the stuff that he's done and said and all and so forth. It's more that they, they want Trump to win because you it affects it affects their stocks. And 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 which uh, the belief that a Biden win will tank a lot of the stocks, so it affects their pockets. Mm-hmm. Which again, if it's a, these are Canadians you're talking. These are Canadians I'm talking. To. Okay, if you talk to your American friends, about any my reason? American friends, I don't, I don't think I have one American friend that that's a, that's a Trump supporter. At least mm-hmm. it's not the my. Not American. even Trump supporter, but would vote for that party. Because no. this is the thing too that I want to talk about. Like you talked about Trump as a person, and 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 every every leader as a person. We can talk about Trudeau and the scandals he has. Right and, and and the weed yeah, scandal yeah. and the blackface and a lot of things sure. that if Trump was caught with a blackface at any time, what would happen? A lot of Canadians were just like, oh, whatever. We saw that in the polls. A lot of people didn't care about it. Minorities didn't care about it at the polls. Because, they because, for it, because it wasn't done during the presidency. Or sorry, the a lot of stuff that Trump did wasn't done. We can talk about the you know the, the Stormy Daniels or. Uh, see, or that's, my, that's casino stuff. We all, right? we all, we all like knew. We all knew a lot about that stuff. But the stormy, the stormy Daniels thing, and, and that's again, 
he likes to sleep with porn stars and on his and cheating on his. He's not the only guy to do that. Even even like. One hundred percent, and we had Bill Clinton had his own exactly. situation in the office. Again, in, 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 in and they call him Slick Willie for a reason. At the end of the day, <laughs> um, and that wasn't because of that. That was just basically again another way for Bill. But um, all in, all in all, it's just more to do with what gets said, what gets done, and and, and the social media aspect of it. When when Trump like Trump used to be on WWE, Trump used to be the Apprentice. I, I didn't really care about my. I didn't even yeah, dislike yeah. Trump to be honest with Not you. Because when, 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 when Trump caught the stunner, it is what it is. It was a humorous guy. He was a personality. He was on Fresh Prince. Everyone's always blaming me for everything. He was one of those guys that you take as a as comedic value. Yeah, he's a reality TV yeah. star. And he's an actor. That's one thing. When you're leading a country and you're technically probably the most powerful person in the world, mm-hmm. you you go to a different type of stage. Because I, I was a guy that when Rob Ford would do stupid stuff here as mayor, I laughed at that. I didn't like I didn't even care. That's his personal life and that. The way that he conducts himself on social on social media, that's another thing. That that to me has been, been one of the biggest I'm I don't you know, know, think confirmed. He's he can tweet for himself. Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. because if you look at some of the stuff, if you're if you go on his on his timeline, he's tweeting stuff like and here's the thing. He doesn't even look at some of those videos. And that and that's why he's a dangerous individual. He will tweet conspiracy theories about people killing other people, which a, a president should not be doing whatsoever. He tweets anything that has to do with giving him any positive vibes without even looking at the videos. He's tweeted white supremacist videos all over the place at times. And that's the type of stuff that I don't want. I can have a politics discussion with almost anybody, and I've had this thing. If you start talking to me about how people are drinking blood and people are doing some kind of crazy situation like that, I can't with that stuff. Like, oh, you know, the Democrats, they're drinking blood. Like they're like Hillary Clinton's doing like they're on Tom Hanks is in, is in a pedophile race. Like I don't know where this stuff comes from. And if you've got some attainable proof, you said and here's the thing, you know, the Borat movie just came out. I don't know if I you didn't see it. They haven't seen it. So they I am not gonna But I heard about what happened with that. And I okay, let's get back to the gambling yeah. because we can go into that. Yeah. You're betting who you're voting. Who, who are you betting your money on? Who do you think's gonna win? Not who you're voting for. Yeah. I'm if I had to bet my money on based on all the scenarios that I've known, you had to bet a thousand of your own. I would say that Joe Biden will wins the wins the election. Really? Okay. Based on the fact that I've I've literally looked at all the scenarios. You know that Hillary was like a ninety nine percent to win last time or ninety. True, something. but the issue here is the issue is is your difference. The, for example, Hillary's favorability is much lower than than, than Biden's. Hillary's favorability was in the forties. Biden's is, is has been pulled into the fifties. Which is which is big. A is not much better, and B is not that. I, this is my opinion. I don't think that people, even people voting for Biden, and this is a whole different thing about leaders. I feel like you know the, the question I ask are these the two best people you can give me? And hundred percent, I hundred percent agree with that. But the thing about like I said about Biden is you look at him and you're like, hey, do I really just want Trump out of office, or do I really like where he is going, where Biden is going to lead this country? No. And I think it's more so the people that are voting for Biden are saying, I don't want Trump in office, as opposed fair. to where I think Biden should take this country. The, the, the problem that the Americans have, and, I, and I've watched the, the, those two debates, and I probably, like, the first one was an absolute They're both disasters. I but the, the, the fact that okay, a, lot, a lot of Americans are afraid of Biden based on the, fi- uh, the fracking situation, which, mean, which means he's going to try to cut all, all of his oil jobs, which is pretty big in the States. But you have to look at it. In sense of place, the oil companies obviously want, want to keep that going as much as they can. But anyone would like want any real sensibility to see where the world is turning, you know that 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 sustainable energy is going to be a big deal because like you can see that the with climate, a smooth transition. Yeah, if you don't yes. believe in the climate change problem or whatever, that you, you think that everything's going to be fine or not, but we know that re- reusable and like green type of energy is going to be needed. Electric cars, we, we see all that's coming. Yeah, but it's slow. It's a slow change. Slow and we see that in 20, Alberta, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Alberta yeah. jobs, and we see their economy go down. Too. Twenty thirty, and I think California is going to be going to be banning cars like a gas. California needs to do twenty thirty five because it's a disaster. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but the, the, the situation with that, and and you, and you just read it off off the odds. You can yeah. see where, where the clear thing has been, and a lot of people aren't buying what what Trump is selling because you, because for example. We've turned the corner on the whole COVID thing. Yeah, we've turned the corner. Last, I, last I week, you had, the most, you had the most cases that you've had in a long time. That's international. That's all no, no, across no. the globe. Numbers are going up. But it's the hand that has record highs. France how, has record okay, highs. How can you say that you've turned the corner? You haven't turned the corner. Uh, okay. But you haven't turned how the many corner. times have politicians lied? I, 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 like I said, I'm not defending any leaders. I'm just saying, how many times like has Trudeau said this or that, or Macron said this, and you're like, are you kidding okay, me? Well, it's the way that, that the, like, for example, you brought up the, the Wii scandal. The we scandal thing in, in general is and that, it's bad. that you can't talk that it's not bad. It's terrible. Well, but, but, but here's the thing. So you had his mom and his uh, and his wife working for a charity organization, getting getting paid millions of dollars, speakers and then whatever. Which is which is their you know that's their job. That's their situation. He went through and again I'm looking big picture. 
the ethics commissioner was, was supposed to be an unbiased situation. He was told, you know, this is a situation, this is going to be a problem. The ethics commissioner had no problem with it. The conservatives grabbed grab that and they're like, well, this is a huge problem. Again, you have one guy in the States accused of, of, of cheating on his taxes, refusing, refuses to give his tax. Now, if Trudeau was doing that, like Trudeau had cheated on his then I'm, I'm sorry, $750 in taxes, you pay more than in taxes, I pay more in taxes than that. And that, that's, just, uh, that's just reality. If I have okay, a million dollar yeah, yeah, companies, yeah. you gotta pay more than $750 in taxes. How many people have they Like, and I hate to, like but I said, I'm your friend devil's advocate. So yeah. one guy, one guy is getting grilled for his, his family being in a charity situation and they, a we, uh, charity was afforded some kind of contract based off, well, you know, you're, 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 you were too close because your wife and your mom are working for it. The other guy, who by the way, every sitting American president has always released his taxes, is giving 20 excuses why he can't release his taxes because he knows, my, my personal opinion, that if he releases his taxes, he's cooked. Because if you had nothing, here's the thing, if you had nothing to hide, if you had nothing to hide, and your taxes were paid properly, well, they're under audit. IRS is so, like, hey, I have a serious question because I don't know the answer. Did Obama show his birth certificate? Because I remember Trump asked him. So yeah, he ended up doing it? Yeah, right. and, that, and that was the thing. And he, was it forged? No, and, and see, that, that's the thing. And those type of situations, now, now all of a sudden, well, what's, what's the big thing in the news? It's that the, that Biden's Ukraine, it, Ukraine it, laptop it, and Biden's, Ukraine. and now that's been said that that that's was been the, in the news for a that while. was all that's all been Russian propaganda and and here's the thing Ukraine and, yeah yeah well, well Hunter Biden is not running for this that's another thing Hunter Biden is not running for this election what what, what, his, what his son he's admitted that his son was a was a cokehead he's well, his son if his son was getting money he'd get his money to his dad the only reason he got that is because his dad was VP of a country. Again, and but, even, you know, even those even yeah. those emails were prior after the, the whole VP thing. And, and the Hillary thing, the, the emails, that's another and again, thing. And, right? and the odds, and, and here's the thing, and, and I'm like, so you're telling me that, that that this new guy that just came out, this Tony Bobolinsky guy, had all this information, and all of a sudden, a week before the election, decides, it's always hey, like that. But, but you see, they're because if you because release they, it too early, then nobody's going to remember it. So it's like the no, weasel. But here's the thing. For example, oh, they're they're spying on my campaign. Who said Obama that? Gate. Oh, 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 that's what Trump was, was tweeting oh. about from uh, Obama Gate. We're going to put him in jail in no time. All of a sudden, we said you can put Hillary in jail. Well, no, no, they wanted Obama because they spied on his campaign, and all of a sudden they have people going on TV saying, "Man, man the president didn't do anything illegal. They were they were they were looking at guys that were working under Trump that were under investigation." As soon as that got figured out that, that they, they couldn't go anywhere, it changed the exact tune. Nobody talks about no Obama gate no more because it's going nowhere. What, 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 what gets fed is you get fed into these news, you try to gain some steam for a couple of days, and then it goes to nothing and nothing ever happened. Hillary's not in jail. Like, nothing ever happened. It's, it's just news that it gets fed to stop, to heat, up a, 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 heat up a certain base, and then they, they play off of it. And that's where, that's where this whole, this whole came in and all this other stuff. And I see that on social media. We have friends like that. I'm, I'm not calling anybody out. Like, at least when you're like, I understand maybe some people are more into certain things than other, than others, but but again, the whole I, I draw the line at any blood at any, at any drinking of the blood or anything like that because anything that, else you're game. <laughs> no, not anything else I'm game. But I just it's just that like all of a sudden, well, where do you grab Tom Hanks's name from? Or like it's just that it's too, it's way too out there to be really believable. And even guys that have like run those websites are like, yo, these people are insane. They like. I don't know, but anyways, to go back to your point, I, I put money on Biden because there are certain states that Hillary had no chance in, and that, and that Biden yeah. might turn, yeah. which is crazy. Even Texas is, 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 is a swing state, which is insane. Texas hasn't been a swing state in forever. There's a legitimate chance that Biden, not much of a chance, yeah. but a legitimate chance that Biden might swing Texas, which for the Republicans would be, if, 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 he, if he loses Florida or Texas, Absolutely not. Yeah, and I can't see him losing any of those, but, of those things. But hey, of course, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, yeah. all and every, even Arizona look all likely to go to Biden based really? on that. Yeah, and even Arizona is yeah. Arizona's up uh, seven points for Biden. For Biden. Yeah. So if he gets those, if, if he wins Pennsylvania and he gets in the end, it looks like Michigan he's, he's got him in the bag almost. If he wins those, he doesn't even need Florida or Texas. It, it's a done. Okay. Right? okay. Uh, yeah. Question for you: Who's your least favorite uh, basketball player? My least is there anybody that like you don't like? My least favorite yeah, basketball. Like a star? Oh, I mean, based off of this year, I, I probably, you know, if, Mar if Marcus Smart probably, I, I, hate, I hated Marcus Smart for whatever. But I didn't have a problem with him up until that series, but I, I can't stand Marcus Smart to okay. save his life. So we're going to, just to put like a friendly thing. Okay, so I'm going to get into my one minute thing yeah. why I'm going to take, <laughs> if, if, I'm, if I'm betting money, and I'll get back to that in a second. Okay. So if I'm betting money, I'm going to bet on Trump for two oh, reasons. Sure. And, and the number one reason, I think, is because I don't remember the last time that a president didn't do two terms. I think it was Bush's dad. 
I want to say, but I know that since like since Clinton's been in there, he's did two years, Bush did two years, Obama oh, did two, two years. Percent. It's very like that's I'm just yeah. playing off numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like I said, regardless of I'm just talking about the job that the, they've done in terms of economy. Mm -hmm. I think that the economy would be better off. Well, certainly, economy would be better off if not. This not really Trump is like you know controls everything, but even like Republicans are generally it's the same as a conservative party here. The books are usually better when a more conservative party is in place. More money, I think that I'm almost certain that's a fact, and I'm not talking about a certain country. When a conservative government's in place, most times books are better. Um, so there's those reasons. The biggest thing, like I said, for me is is the fact that you know you're, you're unlikely to lose your second term, and like almost a lot of things have changed. Like COVID is a if COVID didn't happen, I think it's almost a guarantee that Trump wins. But people don't like the way that he handled it. That's another big thing, mm -hmm. right? In terms of the economy and stuff, I don't think from if you're an unbiased person looking in at the American economy, and I know that they go up and down. We know these things, the recession, you can only go up. When you hit the top, you're only going down. And the odds. The odds is another big thing, right? Yeah, because like, you gotta you get gotta money, look, yeah, you gotta look at it. And, and it's not like it's not it's money. not a long shot either. Like you're you're making almost one and a, more than one and a half times your money for the active president, the president. To, to repeat in a way. Mm -hmm. And based on that, I'm going to take Trump. And, and the, the, one, the, the one thing that I want to sustain is that the Obama administration took over from the, the Bush administration and the country was in a recession. So, and at a recession, you only have one way to go, yes. regardless of who's so, about. So Obama, Obama and Biden technically bring the, the U.S. up where they were in a good point. And technically, if you go by, and, I'll, and I, have a, I can show you to even a chart, the Trump administration is actually, and even this is even before COVID, yep. they were going into another recession. And that, that was in February, before COVID even really started. So you're saying this is not according to the timeline? No. They were, so they were going through a recession early? So they were going through, and, and it's a proven, and, I, and Trump loves to like state all these, that's another thing, like, you know, I've never seen a, a president get fact-checked so many times either, because he just says well, whatever's on his mind. But he had this situation where he, he gained a pretty solid economy and not even before, even when COVID only really started hitting them around March, April-ish, they were already starting to go in the tank. So that was February-ish. And it's been, again, there's a chart that had all the presidents, I'll, I'll again send it to you, that all the presidents in terms of economy, jobs, gains, and so forth, Trump, Trump actually lost jobs. They went to, they went to the red, not the blue. It third. That I think was it before November. So, so, COVID actually so started yeah. November. So I think it was it was it was basically before that. So I think the first year that Trump was was, was in office, he had a big a, a bump over the, the 20, uh, 2012 year that Obama was. But then since then, it's definitely dipped down significantly. And I'm not gonna say. Here's the thing. Uh, yeah. Well, my only thing is that with me, it's more to do with not the economy and so forth. It's just, I, I just I don't. It's, it's just a bad, terrible human being. And to me, that the economy is important and all that, and I get the stock, so I understand how people are like that. And, but it's just that, for, for example, the states are doing much worse, I, uh, I believe, in the whole COVID thing, because there's no, there's no central situation. You have uh, the governor saying one thing, the president saying another thing, he caught COVID, the mask, like, you see Biden's going around doing like very socially distanced events of 10 people. Trump's got rallies and people catch. Two more people caught it at his, as, uh, at his rally yesterday, spreading that stuff all around. He, he, it's not a guy that you can really trust with your, your livelihood at the end of the day because he, he looks more like he, he's doing it for number one and not for all around. And that's and again, making fun of disabled people. Like, I didn't, he, that, he's just, yeah. he's if, if that's true, you, if anybody yeah. makes fun of disabled stuff, I, don't, I can't yeah. fact check that, but that's terrible. Yeah. But the, getting back, and that was for your yeah. last point about the whole, um, damn, what was it that you were saying? The economy. Oh, no, no, when he holds a rally, for example, yeah. right? At the end of the day, the Americans love, and most countries do, they love their freedom, right? Sure. And you can't compare, because especially if you've been to the south of the state, it's a different country, even the south and the north, sure. right? They like their value, they like their freedom, they're all sure. about the amendments, and that's great. You want to, that's the way you were raised, in a free country and all that stuff. With COVID, and I don't want to get into, you should give up these rights to do that, you should be in lockdown. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that they know. So now what's happening is, let's getting back to the Trump thing is, Trump's holding rallies, nobody's saying that you're these rallies. If you True. value your health, True. you can still go to these rallies to wear a mask. You could not go to these rallies at all. He's not True. telling you you have to go. Now, then you could say, okay, he's starting them. Some people are going to go anyways. Well, but anyway, You have a lot of choices you make. And it, like, yeah. nobody has a gun to your head saying you need to do anything. But, okay, so but, but here's the thing. My thing is that 
Okay, so you know what's going on. You might have a higher chance. But if you have a how many? Okay, so let's let's say like we know all the like we got a lot of people. I believe that this is all this is all made up and and all this stuff. This is all a pandemic and all this other stuff. How many more would you say that those are Trump people compared to Biden people? Let's let's and let's put the cards on the table. A lot of people that think this is all scams that we shouldn't be wearing masks and all are a lot of people that are, are, are into those conspiracy theories ideas, which tend to lean more on the right side of, of the table. Why well, they went where this way, not like, and that's the issue. A lot of there, people think it's not going to get this with someone to last point. With you, like Canada has their liberal and their and their PC parties, and, and it's the same in the states. Now, I'm just going to say this with. So giving so giving money to social issues, whether it be mental health, mental health uh, shelters, uh, schools, all that kind of stuff. This side, which is liberal and democratic, is always nine times out of ten going to give more monies to the social aspect. Mm-hmm. The, so that's one thing we know. There's certain things that, for the most part, are going to be values or traits that are associated with a certain party. Religion, for example, especially mm-hmm. in the states, more religious people we think are in the south, which are Republican, sure. for the most part. Right, right. Doesn't mean that they're good or bad people. And that's just one thing, like I said, or giving money. So you can't look at it and be like, oh, are all liberals bad and all Democrats? No, no. no. And, and this is the same in our country, right? And you can't look at that because everybody needs to be kind of judged differently and not with the same brush. The one thing that we're doing better here than what they're doing there, and I'll give credit, I'll give credit to the governments here, is that if, for Shut example, here, for example here, yeah, you, you we're we're run by a, a conservative premier that at the end of the day, when Dougie Fresh, or Doug Ford. That he at the end of the day decided that he need, he needed to put these measures in place. If if it were like the ones in the states, we would be no, because again, remember they don't have to follow whatever federal situation is. If they if Dougie was a lot like a lot of the governors in the states, we would be in, in a lot bigger Open chaos. The Republican governor. We would yeah, we would have been in a situation where they he doesn't believe in any of the mask stuff or there's no mask mandate or anything. We would be way worse. And I'll give Doug credit there. Because he wants some people over. Yeah. He wants some non There's some over. stuff that I'll never agree with him on, but at the end of the day, he at least he's played it smarter that he was trying to save some people's lives. Yeah. I'll give him full credit on, on that. And that's where I think this, this, the things in the States is different. While we're over here, it's not as, well, it's not close, close, but it's real. in the States, it's like this. Yeah, and there's been some other things and too. That's that's people, a lot of people have talked about gyms, for example, right? And, and owners sure. of all these better restaurants. They said, sure. I think they said only 40% of restaurants will end up still being in business 100%. after the pandemic. And how many people that went to the gym actually caught it compared to schools, for example, okay. and all this stuff. And we talked about schools at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I remember after March break, I told some people, I think the school year is done. People are saying, wait till April. I said, I'm not sure they're going to go back in September. I don't think that things are going to get back to somewhat normal until about July of next year. Sure. Different topic for a different day. But anyways, closing thoughts. You have the Democrats, I have the liberals. I ask you who your least favorite players because if Trump wins. Me, you have the Republicans. So yeah, you have the Democrats, <laughs> I have the Republicans. Republicans. Um, and if so, but that's because you're betting. But, but my if, betting thing. So if, if, if you got, who do you actually think is gonna win? I put you on the spot. I think. I think you think, you think that Trump is gonna win. win? Yeah. Well, even with all, the, even the, with the odds that are so uh, stacked against them, eh? I don't. I don't like this. Is, like I said, I mean, like I guess Hillary, 40, stuff, 40, yeah. but but it's different. That's what I'm talking about. The Hillary stuff was different because. The it, she was never. You think it's going to be a clear cut win? I or do you think it's going to be like a 52, 51 no. percent win? I do. I do. I do, I do, I do think it's going to be a clear cut win. And this is why I, I, I tell you why. When when there's a mass turnout, the Democrats always win. It's it's historical fact. You can look it up. Does that mean that the Democrats are lazy? Here's the thing. Last yes or no? I think, well, again, that's a situation. I think here's what, what happened in twenty sixteen was was something a, a slightly different. Trump technically still lost the popular vote, which in most countries would mean he. That's yeah, like three million people. Yeah. The issue that happened there is that the Democrats took, uh, didn't believe that in certain places where they looked like they, they were going to manage, votes. they were going to lose votes. So Trump won some places by one hundred twenty thousand or whatever it is. It was very a very minuscule win. If you look at all the and again polls can be wrong. Can they all be that, that wrong? I don't know. I don't buy. I don't buy it. Stuff, right? I think that the fact that again and look at the odds the way they've gone. There's certain places that were usual, like Republican strongholds yeah, that, are that, are, that are in a big trouble. And I think right now, if I had to lay, lay the map on you right now, the toss-up thing you have, I think Biden's got about 210 secure electoral seats already done. Like it's, it's done and dusted. While Trump's got about 120. So that basically means that Biden needs 60 electoral seats to get to 270 and get to W. There's actually CBC, shout out to CBC, has like a little like a video game thing where you can literally put like, Trump, like Biden gets Pennsylvania, Trump gets this, and it's like a little video, like uh, like a uh, Super Nintendo thing, where like they move closer and closer, and then when it hits the two seventy, there's a little like, it's it's actually pretty interactive, pretty funny. 
it, it, it would take Trump winning and nearly sweeping all of those states that are quote unquote toss ups mm -hmm. to actually get the job done. Which is it, is it, you know, we see these like miracle soccer games, NFL games, you never know. He's, he's about a, a, a slight favorite over a Hail Mary at this point, in my personal opinion. And again, maybe maybe it's because... I'll yeah. fact check you when it shows up. Yeah. I have to check this stuff. And that's all I don't agree with you, but I don't but believe you. But there's, it's, okay. looking, it's looking rough. It's looking, right. it's looking way more rough compared to Hillary because of the fact that Hillary didn't have the sustained popularity compared to what Biden does. And because people actually now know what Trump, what Trump is. And you might think, you know, the economy, whatever it is, but as a human being and everything that goes on, that's been the problem. The, the burning. This is the gambling yeah. show. I'm talking about who I would bet on. Right? Yeah. I don't that's the thing. That's a smart gamble yeah, 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 because you'd be yeah. making more money than I would be on Biden. Mm -hmm. But my money's probably also a little bit more secure. You want to win money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you want to okay. win money. So yeah. the bet is if Trump wins, you're going to have to wear a Celtics jersey, which I will get from Lamar Graham. I think, I, I think I they still have, I think have a Celtics jersey from the KG days. Okay, okay, so you have to wear a Celtics jersey. That's fine. Okay. I'll take that back. I'll wear that jersey you have if Biden won. Really? Oh, LeBron? Oh, I, I know that way. <laughs> this is thing you could. <laughs> I, I take a picture of that. <laughs> it might not ever happen again. That's fine. That's fine. All right, guys. We'll see you next time on the block. Uh, have a good one. And uh, election day is going to be obviously. Tuesday. Watch on your NFL bets as well. Take care.